Uh, show the screen. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Okay, I will uh, present her. She works for the NASA Earth Science Data System GIS team. And uh, we will uh, watch a video I will play for using NASA Earth observations to enable open science. Hello, and thank you for joining our talk about using NASA Earth observations to enable open science with GIS. Today, we will provide an introduction to Earth science and our data systems, then transition to discovering, accessing, and using the data, showcase applications of NASA Earth observations, and highlight resources for you to get started. We also want to provide an invite for engagement. Most people associate NASA with outer space, but NASA also gathers information about the Earth from a fleet of satellites. This information helps us to map the connections between our planet's vital processes and the effects of ongoing changes. A variety of multidimensional data is collected to fuel this research, and that data is freely and openly available to anyone. This slide shows the operating satellites in blue and green, those in development in purple, and those in the planning stages in yellow. NASA Earth Science oversees data centers that are dispersed around the United States with 16 terabytes of data archived and 32 terabytes of data products distributed each day. This data comes from spacecraft and field campaigns collected over many years to support Earth Science research worldwide. Our goal is to ensure Earth observation data are discoverable and usable to the broader community, specifically those employing GIS technology. Within NASA's Earth Science Data Systems, open source science serves as the foundation of the program. That is the open sharing of data, information, and knowledge within the scientific and application communities and the wider public so that we can accelerate scientific research and understanding around the world. NASA open data policies are helping break down barriers to using NASA Earth Science data and to foster a more collaborative, inclusive scientific process open to anyone, regardless of background, ethnicity, gender, or geographic location. Our activities support the open source, open science ecosystem and its core principles. Shorten the time it takes for a new user to find and learn how to use data. Increase the community contributions by, by allowing for integration of new data in web-based maps and applications. Explore and exploit data in new ways, such as geospatial web services, dashboards, interactive web maps, applications, stories, and notebooks. NASA has a wealth of data available to enable science to better understand our planet. So I'd like to transition to how you can discover, access, and use NASA's Earth observation data. Here we have Worldview, a visualization application that provides the capability to interactively browse full resolution satellite imagery layers. Many of the available imagery layers span multiple years and are updated within three hours of observation, essentially showing the entire Earth as it looks right now. You can search and add layers via thematic areas or science disciplines. Within Worldview, you can view data over time and also compare data sets. Here we're comparing mammal species richness data on the left with the MODIS global land cover type data on the right. The land cover imagery shows 18 different land cover types, while the mammal richness data shows the number of species in a particular class, family, or threatened category. If you want the raw data files, NASA data is freely and openly available. Earth Data Search provides the means for discovering, filtering, visualizing, and accessing all of NASA's Earth Science data holdings. This includes more than 33,000 data collections. Here you can search by topic, collection, processing level, place name, or time range. NASA also utilizes ESRI's ArcGIS Online, which is a collaborative web-based GIS that allows users to create and share data, layers, maps, applications, and analytic products. We have over 1,700 content items that are publicly available, ranging from web services, dashboards, notebooks, and story maps. We also have a multi-data center collaboration effort underway to integrate data from across the data centers and science themes to develop publicly accessible interactive web maps and apps focused on key topics like drought, flooding, and wildfires. 
Selected content is also being nominated to Esri's Living Atlas of the World, which now features 16 imagery layers provided by NASA Earth Data. Esri has also curated layers attributed to NASA, and seen here are a few examples of content that has been enabled using NASA Earth observations. These are typically time-enabled image services, which you can then use in a viewer or pull into your own application or a desktop tool to include open source tools like QGIS. If you use Google Earth Engine, you'll search and find many NASA data products available in their catalog as well, including curated content provided by Google. This interface accommodates the direct ad about data files and services, and from here you can enable analysis and share your science. The bottom two screen grabs are from NASA's Applied Remote Sensing Training, or RSET program, which hosts webinars and are a great resource for capacity building. We'll touch on that later. A few other tools to access and use NASA's geospatial data is the Appears tool from the Land Processes DAC. Appears offers a simple and effective way to access and transform geospatial data from a variety of federal data archives. Appears enables users to subset geospatial data sets using spatial, temporal, and band or layer parameters. This tool utilizes GIS server technology to enable a single point of access to all services, distributing a wealth of data. The Alaska Satellite Facility focuses on Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR data. Vertex is their search tool, which allows you to preview numerous types of SAR data. Vertex also offers on-demand processing of radio ter radiometric terrain correction. They have several data recipes and an ArcGIS Python toolbox for integrating and analyzing SAR data in a GIS. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory Spatial Data Access Tool, or SDAT, is an OGC-based web application to visualize and download spatial data in various user-selected spatial temporal extents, file formats, projections, and web service types. NASA Earth Science data are currently being used in a vast number of applications where environmental conditions must be considered. These include food security, disasters, habitat suitability, biological diversity, disease, air quality, sea level change, and water quality. NASA provides all of the, these data freely and openly available to anyone in the world, which means they can be integrated into a variety of real-world, multidisciplinary applications. Let's look at how NASA programs are supporting these efforts. The Applied Sciences program supports partner organizations and research scientists who are using Earth observations to solve the world's toughest challenges. From local communities to national governments and across every region of the world, our collaborative projects have outsized impact. The program's focus areas include capacity building, disasters, ecological forecasting, food security and agriculture, health and air quality, and water resources. NASA's Applied Remote Sensing Training Program, or RCIT, offers satellite remote sensing training that builds the skills to integrate NASA Earth Science data into an agency's decision-making activities. Trainings are offered in air quality, climate, disaster, health, land, water resources, and wildfire management. Through online and in-person training, RCIT has reached 160 countries and more than 5,200 organizations worldwide. The Disasters Program area of NASA's Applied Sciences Program improves the prediction of, preparation for, response to, and recovery from hazards and disasters around the world. The Disasters team coordinates with decision makers and local governments providing actionable data to recover from disaster impacts and build resilient communities. The Disasters team creates event-based products such as this, where the Multi-Angle Imaging Spectral Radiometer, or MISER team, provided this map of wildfire smoke plume heights for the Australian bushfires. The different camera angles from the satellite provide different views used to derive the height of the smoke plumes. The plume point heights are exaggerated to better show structure of the plumes. Having both accurate and current data during a disaster is critical. The NASA Disasters team has enabled many near real-time web services to provide users with regularly updated content with some data products posted approximately two and a half hours after the observation at the spacecraft. This example is from NASA's Soil Moisture Active Passive, or SMAP, mission, which allows us to detect how much water there is in the surface layer of the soil. This layer is made available with a refresh of every three days. When we integrate this information into a hydrologic model, we can estimate the amount of water present in the surface. 
Actual soil moisture values represent how much water there is in the surface layer of the soil profile. The brown end of the color bar indicates low or dry soil moisture conditions, while the green colors represent high or wet soil moisture conditions. The Disasters Program creates a wealth of resources to understand and respond to a multitude of events. The example here identifies the damage during Hurricane Dorian. To understand the unique value of Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, in combination with geostationary imaging, a spyglass tool reveals potential flooding detected by Sentinel by seeing through Hurricane Dorian. Using the spyglass tool, users can peek beneath the clouds and see where NASA identified potential flooding in blue. NASA's prediction of worldwide energy resources, or power, was initiated to improve upon the current renewable energy dataset and to create new datasets from new satellite systems. Power provides geospatially enabled analysis ready data, which ranges from 1981 to the current date and consists of over 275 meteorological and solar energy parameters at four temporal levels. The Data Access Viewer supports the download of data products from the Power's ArcGIS image services and API through a simplified user interface. We understand NASA data is complex and you might be feeling overwhelmed. To help get you started with learning about using NASA data and GIS tools, the following are great resources. If you are new to using NASA Earth Science data, Pathfinders are the perfect place to start. Pathfinders focus on key themes and are intended to familiarize users with the various data sets that are applicable to a study area, offer guidance on resolutions, and provide links to data sources. Data toolkits are for more proficient users who know what they're looking for. They're designed as entry points to access NASA Earth Science data resources organized by topic. They contain links to datasets, tutorials and how-tos, feature articles and data user profiles, as well as other useful information. The Pathfinder specific to GIS provides a guided walkthrough of NASA data and GIS tools. This resource provides links to the tools from which data can be visualized, subset, and downloaded in different file formats, as well as a brief tutorial on using tools to access NASA geospatial web services. Following along, you are able to create the same images seen here. The Earth Data GIS page provides much of the content that we just reviewed, as well as provide links to tutorials, guides, data recipes, and projects related to GIS. The NASA Earth Data Data Discovery and Access webinars span the Earth Science disciplines and are designed to help users learn about NASA data, services, and tools. As the monthly webinar schedule varies, be sure to check the online catalog for a list of upcoming events. You can search previous webinars by entering in a keyword, an instrument, or mission, or science team. Earth Data Forum is a new tool developed to engage subject matter experts from several NASA data centers to discuss general questions, research needs, and data applications. Here you have the capability to search by discipline, major projects, and services slash usage. Users can query how to access, view, and interpret the data, alleviating time and energy of working with complex data and focusing instead on the research and analysis aspects of science. Now that you've heard from us, we'd love to hear from you. Feedback from user communities is extremely valuable. Understanding your data needs to include what format, distribution method, and application or tool used to work with the data will help us improve our services. The URL here is a link to a very brief questionnaire we'd love for you to fill out. We are also teeing up a new initiative focused on uncovering needs to broaden outside use of NASA data, or otherwise known as Unbound. This is targeting new users who aren't currently using NASA data, but have a valid requirement or use case to explore. Additionally, if you're interested in funded research opportunities, I'd encourage you to check out the programs listed, which focuses on harnessing NASA data to advance our understanding through applications, tools, and technologies. These are a few places to get started on exploring with us. Through the open source science efforts, NASA is helping create a paradigm shift in how science is conducted and opening up participation to a broader cohort of investigators than ever before. This in turn will lead to greater opportunities for scientific discovery for societal benefit. We invite you to come explore with us. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you for that great presentation. We have Leah with us and also Cynthia. 
Um, I will uh, read for you some questions. And first of all, thank you. Uh, the, it's amazing all the data that uh, is available and all the portals and all the tools. I really use them. So it's uh, great to have you here. Um, we have uh, a question. Uh, is it possible to collaborate within these platforms by modifying models and algorithms? You need to unmute. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, great. Um, yes, you know, all of our algorithms are made available online as part of this open science initiative. And um, so you can take those and modify them to fit your needs, um, especially within Google Earth Engine or um, and, of things of that nature. Um, so does that answer the question? Leah, you have anything else to add to that? Um, just to say that this is a relatively new initiative as well, so there's a, a lot of room for growth and input, and so I think you'll probably see a lot more coming, um, but this is a somewhat new initiative and we're going full force, so um, looking forward to see what's to come, but appreciate those uh, ideas. Okay, great. Uh, another question is, um, are there any way to make an algorithm modeling catalog and envelope the creation of uh, them as part of the open science initiative? So I'll take a stab at that. Um, NASA does have a GitHub where we have a lot of um, our code and um, I, that is a, you know open to everyone. However, um, we are working because open science open source science is such a new initiative we've always had open data but just making everything as open as possible and as early as possible in the process um this is still new and we are working that working you know with other divisions within nasa to make that happen and so we're still we have a team of folks that are working on um the curation aspect of it and how we're going to go about doing that um but definitely check out NASA's GitHub site. Um, and each of the DACs, as Leah mentioned, have great um, resources from Jupyter Notebooks to our code and things like that, that um, can readily be accessed and, and modified to fit your needs. Okay, thank you, that's great. Um, I was uh, also interesting because uh, in a part of your talk, uh, you were saying that the, the amount of data is, is a lot and there are so many different portals and many different ways to access the data. So uh, maybe you can uh, put some links uh, about the parts of the talk that you were talking about, the how to look for the information. And uh, also, uh, in my case, I use a lot of... Uh, RSET uh, courses just to see where is the specific data. They are very useful. Also, I just share my my uh, experience. Um, so it's great uh, that you can share all of this uh, data. Um, is there any other questions? Also, they are asking if you can uh, have a link for the talk uh, to, to see it. Um, there is a question about uh, that, and I don't think we have any more comments. Uh, yeah, and, that, and that will be posted uh, soon. So if you subscribe to the Earth Data channel, and, and that's a wealth of resources, that's one of the links I also just sent out in the chat, but that's where this talk will also be um, hosted later in the week. Okay, thank you. That's great. Great info. So I see that you posted a lot of links, so we can have fun with that. So, <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much. I don't know if you have any more comments or uh, anything you want to share with us. If not, uh, we can go forward with the next um, talk. Thank you.